Hey, hello all you fans of Ricotta, this is Anastasia Weigel. I'm processing Rick's papers. I'm down the wire. Um, we initially started with uh, 36 boxes. I had to add two more because um, I had some materials that Holly gave me, oh gosh, um, maybe two years ago. But we are down to um, eight boxes. Um, those eight boxes are going to be pretty, pretty easy. I think about I'm going to say about four of those boxes are uh, uh, magazines where he, uh, he might have written short stories or, or maybe some review of his books, uh, newsletters, uh, um, horror newsletters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, pre-pub stuff. A uh, large amount of letters. Oh, gosh. A lot of letters um, from fans, from other writers. Um, from publishers that don't make a reference to what they're writing about, like what book they're writing about. But anyway, there's lots of letters. So I just, once in a while, I just have to stop and share with you what I find. I'm uh, finishing up the unpublished short stories. We had a lot of uh, short story manuscripts uh, that weren't published. And, uh, you know, Rick is uh, horror suspense, psychological thriller, a lot of cross genre. But I came across um, I'm pretty sure they're early, early writings only because of the, the quality of the paper, the type of paper, the type of, uh, font, uh, familiarity with other, his, other writings of his, uh, this is before, uh, his science fiction, The Star Road, which is, uh, was recently, last year or so, recently published as a novel, or he's written, he's written as a script. So I came across these, um, Two variations of a science fiction short story called The Sand and the Sea, uh, relating to Mars visitation. But I found a kind of funny one here uh, called, and some of you may be familiar, I don't know, surprise me. Uh, it's called, quote, dot, 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 and even break, unquote. So I'm reading it. I know it's science fiction. I found, um, where is it? I found some handwritten notes. Um Two page legal size uh, yellow pad where he's in his own hand writing, just writing the story, making some changes before he types it up. Uh, so I'm reading it, of course, we because oh, we're um, uh, because humans are so self centered, we always think that the story is, is written through our point of view. But as I'm reading this, uh, the particular character isn't very happy that uh, on this spaceship, he has to do some dirty work. He has to go down to the lower level of the ship and do some cleanup, and he's not very happy. Uh, so I'm not going to go down there and contaminate myself with those bipedals. <laughs> and so he's going on and on to that. Um, he has a mission. He has to uh, investigate some alien um, uh, entities. But as I'm reading it, where they're coming out from hyperspace to go down to, well, whatever that is, right? Not light space travel, but regular travel. Um, he comes upon a, a, gal a galaxy, a star system. And then as I'm reading, I realize, oh my God, these are aliens talking about us. I love, I love that point of view. And I thought it was kind of funny because as I'm reading it, he's giving names for us. Oxygen breathers, how insulting is that? Oxygen breathers still makes me, still makes me sick to think about that. Of course, bipedals is a dead giveaway, but then, you know, if we all are into the alien agenda, most of it, we're all bipedals. Um, but um, he's got to investigate their, who they are, and he's not really happy having to do that, doesn't really like them. It's annoying, but and not supposed to be interfering with them because that's the primary rule, because um, I guess his commander says everybody has a right to be part of the creation process. But he decides to do something he thinks will initially will probably wipe out this this particular alien race so he finds what he considers or what the commander says find the best of the brightest and he finds somebody and he says okay uh here's somebody that's kind of the best of the brightest but not in his point of view but he gives this best of the brightest what he calls this uh how do you describe it this like white-haired bipedal creature 
uh, a, a little formula, E equals M squared. So we know that <laughs> your guy is Einstein because he figures, hey, I'll give him that formula. They'll just blow themselves out. They'll just bomb themselves to death. And then we can get rid of these, you know, creatures wasting our time. But he's shocked because they didn't, we didn't really do that. The, the main character in the story says, hmm, you know, he puts in his report, you know, um, a reason that once this biped announced its uh, discovery to the rest of its kind, their natural tendencies would be, will do the rest. Uh, they would develop some primitive bombs and, you know, snuff themselves. Of course, that's the language he's using for these aliens. I think if, we, I think if Rick wrote this story again, I think the dialogue would be slightly different. We get the gist of the story. Um, and of course, he doesn't put that in his report to his commander. That's the whole premise of giving this uh, white furry bipedal, the E M E equals MC squared. Uh, but then he talks about he was so surprised we didn't blow ourselves up. Um, it's gotten, the way he describes the character or the alien in the story uh, says uh, it got quite hot for a while there on this little blue dot of a planet. But the hostile factions had just started to settle down and when we got a recall order with the fruits of my labors going rotten, we had to drop back into hyper. That was a, that was so long ago. And here's, I love this part. I love this part. Now there, that's us, us bipedals. Now they're knocking on our front door. Those watery little bipeds have come looking for us and they're just as nasty as ever. I love that. Especially in the alien, gen the alien agenda uh, theories. You know, we're always looking for that, you know, that we're, are we alone or not? And we're like sending out those, you know, SETI <laughs> signals out there, knocking on door. Hey, are anybody out there? Anyways, I never read a story in all the, the entire collection, which is very large. I haven't come across this one. So I just thought it was kind of funny. And, and, I, and it's only four pages, very entertaining. Anyways, I share that with you. Um, again, I'm touching base. Uh, working on it, um, I took a, a new job uh, as assistant professor at the University of Maine uh, at Augusta in the uh, Library of Information Science program. So I am commuting back and forth um, once or maybe twice, twice a month up to Limestone, Maine. This is where Rick's collections are. This is where I have my uh, archival studio here so I can process his collection, which is winding down. So it's Saturday, September 15th. I've come up and going to finish up the short stories and some minor stuff before I get to those eight boxes. Uh, and I'll be back again next week. I really enjoy coming up here to Limestone, which is very close to Canada. It's very beautiful up here. Uh, but this is taking a lot longer than I anticipated. Uh, but um, I'm getting down to the wire, and I'm really excited about the renting that van, uh, which was made possible through your generous donations to pack up uh, the collection. And uh, making arrangements with uh, the Maine State Librarian to get it down to their archives. Um, gosh, I'm, I keep on saying, well, by this time, like, I'm not going to say that. But it's, it's got to be before the end of the year because this has to be done. It's, just, it's uh, a lot going on, but um, my game plan is that. So anyways, that's a story. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, once the fine days are done, I'm going to send those finding aids to Holly. I want Holly to look at them, make sure I didn't. Uh, miss anything because you know since Rick's death uh, a number of his unpublished uh, short stories have been published so that you know so I'm looking at a collection that that was um, that was put together when Rick was alive so now that he has you know he's passed on and it's been uh, going on five years now lots happened so I'm coming across uh, materials like wait a minute this has been published and sometimes I'm surprised like oh my gosh this was published so I want to make sure I didn't miss something that might have been in a, uh, a magazine that I didn't realize. So since it was unpublished, it's not published. So what I'll do is uh, send a finding aid to Holly to make sure I, uh, I'm spot on on what I'm, how I'm organizing it and understanding what is, you know, what is still unpublished and maybe something in there that, that has been published. Uh, and then I'll finalize it with the index and uh, you'll everybody hear all the donors, uh, like I said. Is going to get a, a copy of that finding aid. Um, so that's the story. I'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Bye.